Hello and welcome back to PPS TV and look what I have in front of me. It's the brand new Panasonic HC X2 and X20. But believe me, after this, you're going to want the X2. So what does this camera or cameras offer you? Well, if you work in the world of fast paced action or news where you actually need to open a bag, remove a camera and start recording in about five seconds, this could be the camera for you. It is in their, I'm going to say, normal style of ENG camcorder. We've got the fold-out viewfinder, LCD, which is daylight viewable. That's a big thing, actually, because you're going to use this outdoors, aren't you? Um, we've obviously got XLRs here and here, and we've got SDI at the back there as well. This is a camcorder that has 4K, 60p, and 50p, 4K. It's a one inch sensor, as I said. It's got hybrid IS, image stabilization up to five or six stops. It's got sophisticated AF with tracking, so you can track faces. And it's also got, shock horror, the thing that I love, actual manual, look, stroke them and they move the focus and the zoom, lovely damped controls. So when you've got it on your shoulder or in front of you, you can actually really feel that way. You can you know, get your composition. You can just gently rock or override to manual if you want to. That is great. And as you can see from this sideways shot that I've got here, we also have all the usual controls. NDs, which we need. Excellent. Uh, Multi-cards, SD card slots. Uh, these card slots allow you to do uh, proxy recording. Um, you can record, uh, obviously, to both cards. You can simultaneously jump from one to another. So on the top here, um, very sturdy. No need to add a cage or any of that nonsense. You've got proper bolt-in connectors here, so you could add a monitor, um, another recorder, another device, um, more audio control if you need to. There is obviously a microphone holder here that I haven't currently got on this. You've got zoom controls here. You've also got the behind the safety launch button. You've got your record here, but it's got a nice cover so you don't knock it by accident. Um, and you can access thumbnails and playback and all that stuff on the top, which speeds things up out in the field. The camera has a built-in mic at the front for scratch, kind of stereo mic at the front, which is actually quite reasonable. If you're in a crash hurry and you need to get some ambient sound, this will do the job. So at the back, we've got uh, some connectors. We've got Ethernet, we've got HDMI, we've got USB. And then on the, on the left here, as you can see, we've got the XLR at the back. And then if I we pull this, we've got headphone and mains power. And under here, we've got SDI 1 and 2, just so you can see there. So all covered by, you could call it Tonka Toy, but I call it tough and dependable covers that will work for years and years. So we've got a lens that gives you about 24.5 millimeters on the wide end. This is important because you need that width for when you're indoors, when you're in a closed environment. And with a one inch sensor, it's great to have a lens that's that wide. And optically, we've got a 20 times zoom. And then if you add the little bit of uh, eye zoom, it can go to 24 times. So you've got a massive zoom range and all built into a body that you don't have to change the glass on. It's not gonna get dust on the sensor, it's a sealed unit. And it's got my favorite thing for very lazy people, it is the drawbridge of hope, as I like to call it. You, raining, not raining. Someone throwing dust at you, shut your drawbridge, open it and you're ready to go in seconds. No fumbling for that lens cap that you've lost at the bottom of a bag. So we've got face tracking AF, as I mentioned. We've also got a dual codec recording, hybrid IS. We've got time code, so you can time code this, so you could match in with other cameras. And speaking of other cameras, this has the full fat Panasonic log. So you could have a multicam situation. They could all be shooting Panasonic log. You could apply a LUT and everything will match color wise. Equally, if you're in a crash bang hurry and you want to shoot natural and tweak a couple of parameters, it will do that as well. It will do live streaming. Yes, you can connect it to the interwebby thingy and broadcast your genius and your creative nonsense wide and far. So that's good to have. It will also do IR filming, proper infrared filming. So if you're the type of person that likes to skulk in dark alleyways, chasing badgers, this could be the camera for you. It does slow-mo up to 120 frames in HD and, and obviously 50 or 60, giving you half speed in 4K. Uh, it also 
um, does HDR. So you have HDR, if you have an HDR workflow, you can do that through this camera. Battery life, extremely good. Uh, the standard battery that comes with this camera that goes in the back, normal Panasonic battery, actually gives you a bit more of a runtime compared to its pre predecessor, almost four hours off the standard battery. Obviously, third-party units are available from other manufacturers like Core, etc. But four hours out of the box is very good indeed. So let's talk about this lens again. This lens is um, f3.5 uh, to 4, depending on where your zoom is, which is reasonably fast piece of glass to marry with a, a one inch sensor. The important bit about this, I think, is that you can get focus drop. You can get bouquet, if you'd like to say, the bouquet of the residence. You can drop the background, even though it is a relatively small sensor, you know, in, ter in terms of that. Having a lens that fast does still allow you to drop things. Of course, the advantage of the one inch sensor is that more things will be in focus as things happen much quicker out in the world, the real world of news. This camera also has something that I really like, a uh, waveform. Every camera should not leave the factory or its birthplace without waveform. Waveform is the single most useful tool. Zebras, yeah, take them, leave them. They're always good, but waveform, waveform, you know where you are, you can see your exposure in your frame and you can plan accordingly. So the two XLR ports are 24-bit, obviously phantom powered, and where they're positioned is actually quite interesting because obviously if you're on a tripod, you might want to use this one at the back here so that you can, uh, you can push it out to the tripod. But if you're using it in a more conventional way, you've also got a nice port up here, which allows you to run, say, a, a wireless connection. An AVX or something from Sennheiser would fit very nicely in there. So to recap, we've got really the ultimate Swiss Army knife of cameras. Um, there's about £600 price difference between the X20 and the X2. I would strongly advise you to be looking at the X2 because of all the things you wish the X20 had, the X2 actually has them and it really is worth that small bump in price because it gives you a much more complete camera in terms of production and how you can work it into the jobs that you do.